right off the bat, um, Dante Martin seemed to take a pretty nasty fall there at the end of that ladder match. You have an update on his status. I, uh, he's at the hospital right now, and the, right before I came out here, I talked to Darius, and Darius is there, and uh, some of the good friends are there, and um, I hope to have a good update soon on Dante. Uh, I, you know, I, I know he's in pain, but I'm wishing the best, and obviously we're all praying for Dante. Dante is an amazing, amazing wrestler. Obviously, his brother has been through serious injuries and missed time, and uh, we love Darius very much too. And we miss Darius when he was out, and I think Dante will probably be out of action for some time. And, and uh, you know, look forward to now Darius taking the time to, to grow and learn from it. But Dante is uh, somebody who's going to be with us for a very, 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 very long time, and uh, I care very much about Dante and. Uh, I've gotten to know him a long time since he came up with us through the pandemic, and um, that, I, that that one hurt a lot of people in the back, including myself, but it hurt nobody worse than poor Dante, and I just hope he's going to be okay. Thank you. And, and just to double dip, um, sure. uh, a few of the champions tonight mentioned Forbidden Door as a potential match. Does Ring of Honor have a role at Forbidden Door coming up? Well, I can't say all the matches at Forbidden Door for sure, but I do think there was likely be involvement given that last year of course the ring of honor world tag team championships were involved and there was that huge match uh of course with tag team championships on the line the three-way match ftr represented ring of honor last year's champions and there has been ring of honor involvement in the past at forbidden door and of course claudio debuted last year at forbidden door so i think there's a good chance that ring of honor can be involved in forbidden door again and i also think there's a lot of potential crossovers between aew and ring of honor and between uh, Ring of Honor New Japan Pro Wrestling, and of course AEW New Japan will be at Forbidden Door. Good chance Ring of Honor could continue being involved again this year too. Thank you. At Tony Denise Salcedo and Steve Culture, so I wanted to ask you kind of a two-part question here, but uh, El Hijo de Vikingo, first and foremost, um, I want to get your personal reaction, uh, you know, as a fan getting to see that match between him and Kenny Omega, and then also how you felt about his match today with Commander. It was a great match tonight with Commander. It was a great way to start an awesome pay-per-view. They started out with a bang, and it was a great match, as we expected. I look forward to hopefully both of them being involved in the near future. The Kingo, great match also with Kenny Omega, truly a dream match. Uh, and uh, I know there was a high anticipation going into that match against Kenny Omega, but I thought they delivered on very high expectations. And also, I thought it really helped draw an audience for the show. And I also look forward to hopefully working with him again in the future. Of course, Commander also will be with us again on Wednesday wrestling against Sammy Guevara, which should be an awesome, awesome match in New York on Wednesday. And it was an awesome match to start the show tonight. And hopefully he'll be with us again. And I, I spoke to him about that after the show. I'd love to see him again, hopefully either here in Ring of Honor or maybe on a Wednesday night in AEW. So uh, I look forward to that. I think there's a good chance again in the very near future. Thanks for asking. Well, Pritchard, Going back again to some upcoming Ring of Honor events, uh, do you have any news on maybe when Ring of Honor is coming back to LA, maybe at a, at a venue like this, or maybe the Globe Theaters down the street? Uh, well, you know, there's a lot of great venues, and I definitely would love to bring ROH back here, and for AEW and ROH. I think this is such a great market for pro wrestling, and it's been great for us. Uh, this past year, we've done a lot of great events out here in LA. And it's been a home to me for years, spending time out here. And uh, so it's a, personally for me, great to spend time out here in LA. And actually five years ago this week is where I had the conversations that led to me getting into pro wrestling and starting AEW. Uh, I had my first conversation out here five years ago this week around Beverly Hills that led to AEW being formed. And I was just in the right place at the right time. And like so many things in life, timing is everything. And uh, I'm very fortunate uh, be able to call LA sometimes in the off season and whenever I can be out here a part time home and uh, I'd love doing more more AEW action out here and certainly more Ring of Honor would be great too. So I'm not sure exactly when I can I can say that, but we'll definitely be back here more often. I see a lot of no, it's good. I have a lot of uh, time, so I see a lot of hands. I'll answer everybody's questions. So uh, whoever you guys want to go to. Uh, you know, you mentioned earlier, sorry, uh, Micro LAs. Um, you mentioned earlier that there were a series of highs and lows on the show by design. Um, you know, I was curious, you know, I, I noticed a lot of fans online were particularly shocked seeing 
uh, both Claudio and Joe were teaming and you know, these very strong emotional ups and downs in the show. Um, I was sort of curious what you're hoping that fans take away from uh, tonight's and, and sort of like what you hope that emotional roller coaster leaves them with going forward. Well, there's a lot of interesting things to keep an eye on going forward, and there were a lot of great matches, and it was an emotional roller coaster of the night, and certainly uh, some very high highs and great moment tonight with Shibata being crowned as a new champion. Of course, that was a great moment, but uh, when Eddie did not win, and that was a, that was a very tough moment. It was it was good to have the backing of Shibata and uh, left us with interesting things to think about going forward. Where does this leave Eddie standing? And certainly, uh, it was a great great match. The crowd was very behind Eddie. I believe people all over the world will still be behind Eddie. It would have been great for him to get the win tonight, but I think there were a lot of times where people did get the satisfying moment, like with Shibata, which also you know to your point. I thought it was also a result that probably surprised people. People did not expect that. And for Shibata to be a reigning champion now in Ring of Honor is something we're also very excited about. So I did think the unpredictability of the card was a plus. And certainly uh, there were times where it was not what people expected. But I think, you know, tonight in many ways the Empire struck back at times. And uh, it was hard to see Mark Briscoe not get that emotional win. But then to see the way the crowd rallied behind him. And then, like we said, to realize that this is only the beginning of the journey for Mark Briscoe and for Jay Briscoe. They're not going anywhere. And, you know, it's a different different era for Mark now. This is the beginning of a singles journey. And he's going to keep getting better and better as a single star now because uh, <coughs> he's under our, new eight, uh, under our new regime here for Ring of Honor, this was Mark Briscoe's first singles match. And, of course, he was coming off some of the best matches in the history of the company. So that was... Uh, an emotional roller coaster there in that match, but then great moment for the Lucha Brothers to become the champions. The crowd was very behind the Lucha Brothers and very in favor of that. So I think there were some very satisfying moments with the Lucha Brothers winning the championship and Shibata winning the championship. And certainly also the crowd would be frustrated to see Eddie not win the championship or to see Mark Briscoe not win the championship. We have great champions in Claudio Castagnoli and Samoa Joe who both retain their championships and have uh, them and another great world champion like Athena retaining the championship. Uh, it was a it was a great night of wrestling, and I think it left us a lot to look forward to. And now on WatchROH.com, all the Honor Club subscribers, people who are watching the TV, streaming, whether they watch it as it goes up Thursday night or whenever you've been able to watch them, we've had really great feedback to the episodes, and we've had great champions with Claudio and Samoa Joe, and we continue to have great champions. But I think for Eddie. Whether it's in ROH or AEW, New Japan, wherever Eddie wrestles, people are behind him all over the world. Mark Briscoe, whether it's in AEW or ROH, people are behind him. And their journeys continue, and Claudio Castagnoli and Samoa Joe retain and continue as champions. But I'm also very excited to have great new champions like Shibata and the Lucha Brothers. Thanks. Right here. Steve, welcome to Tank Wrestling News Co. I know you've been asked about Goldberg and AEW, but is Goldberg and Ring of Honor ever? Ever going to happen? Me no. 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 Yes. No. <laughs> no. It's never going to happen. All right. Just want to uh, clarify. But I do think that's a great. I. I have. I. You know. And as to anything else, I think it's a great. But I don't want. I. I can only imagine now that's going to be people will pull that out. It's like Goldberg would never. But I. You know. I, when people ask me about it, I said I find it interesting. But I do think. That would be interesting for AEW. I think for your question, let me build off your question, because it's a great question, but it's also let me build off it to say that that's a great example of things that I think are the difference between AEW and Ring of Honor. AEW has a bigger budget, but I've tried to take the production values of AEW and use some of the synergies of owning a wrestling company and create a partnership where AEW use and leverage some of the great production team and assets, but also it's great for AEW to be able to develop young wrestlers, to be able to have some of the top stars of AEW come here and represent that company. But also, I, I, I think uh, you have to look at it, and there's things I would do in AEW that might be more expensive. There's things in ROH that I would do that are more to cater to a hardcore fan base. Mm -hmm. And there are great matches, and there are people I can bring in that I know people will be excited to see that would get a great reception for Ring of Honor that might not necessarily translate to a huge Nielsen rating. And I think understanding that AEW has a bigger budget and is great wrestling, you know, and Ring of Honor has the opportunity to continue to grow, and that's a business we're building in Ring of Honor now. And you look, we've done record pay-per-view numbers in the last year, 
and had some of the biggest live gates in the history of the company. So 21 years in, Ring of Honor is growing, which is a really good sign, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I would do something that would be so far out of the character of Ring of Honor. And frankly, I'm not saying it's in the character of AEW, but when you ask me about something like that, with a budget like that, I have to give you an honest answer that that's not what we're doing with Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor's on a huge budget by Ring of Honor standards, but the, when I look at free agency and pro wrestling, there's different wrestlers I evaluate for different spots, and I think they have different values and different uh, revenue streams they can add to a company. And for uh, Ring of Honor and the business model we're doing, we've got great subscription growth. And I mentioned the pay-per-view and live event numbers. This is also the most streaming subscribers Ring of Honor's ever had for Honor Club, plus what we're doing on top of the pay-per-views with a, another great number, uh, I'm sure, for tonight. And uh, great results that we've had for the first three events. So it's a good question. There's a lot of exciting things happening in both AEW and Ring of Honor. I have a big announcement coming up Wednesday, as I mentioned, Claudio and Brian and Mox and Yuta will be the first time we've heard from the four of them together in a very long time. A lot of things to look forward to in AEW, but after this great pay-per-view, I think a lot of things to look forward to in Ring of Honor, but probably safe to say that is not one. All right. <laughs> here we go, right here. Hey, T.K. Jefferson with the Rich Eisen Show. Yeah, hey, T.K., it's great to see you. Good to see you, Devin. Uh, you came on our show in January, and as you're talking to Rich, you know, we, we start to see the responsibilities you have with the Jaguars. Now, in addition to the responsibilities you have with AEW and ROH, how are you able to spin these plates, man, and keep, give these, you know, these projects the, the attention that they need? Well, it's hard. I, you know, frankly, um, that's where private aviation is really very helpful because I've been able to travel around the world. There's times where I've been able to fly directly from AEW over to London and be a part of AEW in full. And there's times where I've been able to go from ROH to an NFL meeting and back to AEW. And in this week in particular, I was at the NFL owners meetings in Arizona until just a few days ago, went straight from there to St. Louis. Then the next day I had a big meeting in New York and flew from New York to here. So I've been just in the last four days down all those flights and I love it. And to be honest, the energy I feel and the excitement, I feel really invigorated. I think there's a lot of factors in that. I feel like uh, uh, I felt really good, honestly, uh, probably since I mentioned since October when my mom came out of her surgery and started doing a lot better. And I felt like I had a whole new lease on life and energy and then go that carried into full gear and doing these Ring of Honor shows. I think I did like the final battle scrum and I like to read the feedback and stuff and a bunch of you were saying like, yeah, that's the best Tony's like looked in a long time. And it's like, yeah, like, a lot of the stress is like being relieved. Really, I'm start feeling better. And uh, then we started doing the Ring of Honor and a lot of people were saying like, how am I going to have the energy to do AEW and Ring of Honor and is it going to be a drag on the shows? But it feels like people are loving what we're doing with AEW and the shows have been really strong. I think we've been saw our best Dynamites recently. And we've done five episodes of Ring of Honor TV and a great pay-per-view tonight. And I feel like that continues to grow and get better too. And I love it. I love that I've been able to open up a new part of my wrestling mind with Ring of Honor. And I think it's, again, it's a great example of the promotions being complimentary. There's things you do in Ring of Honor that make you think differently about AEW and vice versa. And just like I was saying, uh, there's some free agents you would look for different for AEW, different from Ring of Honor. And there's a different presentation. There's different constraints when Athena was out here they asked her about some of that and I think she gave a good answer sometimes to her in the ring she's not thinking about it as much you know when the show's going to commercial or some of those things but to us in the production side it is challenging when I'm laying the show out it's a completely different challenge and also when we're working with the Ring of Honor shows what we have to deal with in terms of uh, advertisers and some of the production elements it's just a different monster all together, but I really enjoy it, and I think it's made me have more fun with AEW and Ring of Honor, and uh, also uh, working with somebody as positive as Mark Briscoe, uh, and seeing him all the time has also put a smile on my face and uh, opened up a, a new uh, part of myself I haven't felt in a long time. Like he said, I feel the Holy Spirit in me, and I feel Jay in me, to be honest, and I can't even imagine how he feels about that, but uh, Mark has been a great influence on me and on a lot of people, too. Thanks. Thanks. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, uh, John Moore, ProWrestling.net. Uh, thank you for taking my question. So uh, my question is re in regards to sort of uh, evolution of content on Honor Club. 
So it's 20, uh, 23. There's a lot of pro wrestling out there, almost like pre, like a prime time every day. So in order for like the consumer to take Honor Club, they're going to need like a hook or something that uh, you know, differentiates a Ring of Honor from everyone else. So in regards to that, are you guys considering like not necessarily taking pay per views and playing them uh, simultaneously on Honor Club, but doing almost Honor Club almost pay per views? Where, you know, where it's Honor Club exclusive? And if not, do you have anything else cooking as for exclusive Honor Club content? I remember in the past they used to have like collections or documentaries, so. Well, I, we're trying to put together a lot of great things, to your point. I thought the Jay Briscoe tribute show was a great event, and that was before we went and started putting on the weekly show for subscribers. And that's a new step for us. And we've only done five episodes, and we're going on a sixth, and it's been really positively received really like the weekly show so i'd like to continue doing that building that now there's a lot of questions going into the weekly show because you know we've done five episodes building up to this pay-per-view it's the first time we've been able to go and build off that and i think there'll be even more interest and i'm hoping it'll drive even more subscriber growth to add a, a great champion now with shibata's pedigree to add great now new tag team champions like the lucha brothers a tag team that Look, nobody's ever going to be able to follow the Briscoe brothers, but to bring in one of the best tag teams in the world, that is pretty amazing. And so we are very fortunate to have the Lucha Brothers now as the champions in Ring of Honor, and the crowd was very happy to see that. The crowd frustrated to see Mark Briscoe lose, but they didn't lose their support for him, and we'll see where that goes. And, of course, Samoa Joe, where does he go next? Is a great TV champion. And uh, for both Claudio and Eddie, what's next? A lot of questions. We know Athena versus Yamashita is a huge match on Thursday. Athena has been, again, one of the MVPs, truly, of that Thursday night show. So I want to keep building that out. And then as for what's next, uh, we know Death Before Dishonor. Last year was a great event for us. That's uh, been a great event, and I look forward to that. And uh, that'll be coming up. I, I think I can confirm we will do Death Before Dishonor and continue these traditions we started last year. It's, it's uh, I must say, Reg, Reg, good to see you. It was you last year who forced me to reevaluate things and again open up a different part of my brain because I've always said AEW wouldn't do a show this weekend in uh, th a place where the other show was happening over the next two nights and I thought uh, you know for AEW that wouldn't make sense but that was also the first night I'd been around Ring of Honor and the first night because uh, I'd been I'd started booking that show from afar I took over the keys uh, in the middle of a process that I, I'd been helping them I helped them with the previous final battle sending FTR and Jay Lethal and stars on video packages and I wanted to support them during a difficult period but I did all that knowing there was a pretty good chance I was not going to be the owner of the next company and somebody else would own all that footage and the way it all came together uh, right before revolution last year it's pretty amazing to think but it was righteous reg who made me uh, reevaluate things and realize maybe I should keep the ring of honor traditions and do things completely different than I would do with AEW so uh, this is not an AEW night but this is ring of honors night and we've been able to do some things differently and put a different spin on it. And definitely the Thursday TV show on WatchROH.com, we continue to grow the numbers. So it's the highest streaming subscription numbers ever in Ring of Honor's history. So I think we're seeing good results and I want to keep building on that. And then uh, as that grows and as we kind of stabilize that, and then we can look at what's next for sure. But it's a great question, John. Thanks. And I'll make sure I see a lot of hands and I'll answer them all. Hey, Bill. You want to Leo Boyer with Shock Barris and I just came Tony, great show tonight. Um, just wanted to ask with you know your recent tour of Northern California with AEW um, and you know doing the show here tonight in Southern California with Ring of Honor. Is there some place that you'd personally like to see AEW and Ring of Honor go to, whether it be another country or another part of the country here in the U.S.? Well, I, the next show for AEW and Ring of Honor will be in New York next week and honestly I was very excited for AEW to go to New York after all the great shows we've had recently but also very excited for Ring of Honor to return to New York because Ring of Honor has a great history around New York and state of New York and around New York City and UBS is a great great venue and I'm excited to bring AEW there but I was also pretty excited to bring Ring of Honor there and now with a great champions in Ring of Honor and I can confirm Athena versus Yamashita is going to take place there. I can confirm Shibata will be there next week. He'll be there in New York and in Rhode Island. That's pretty exciting. And that we're going to be going back to the East Coast after this, places where Ring of Honor has a good history. 
but there's a lot of places I would love for Ring of Honor to run events. Uh, certainly, it would be exciting. Ring of Honor's done shows in Canada. I know AEW is doing the Canadian shows. It'd be great for Ring of Honor to go there too, back to Canada and do more international events. Um, but right now, I'm very excited. We're continuing to build Ring of Honor back up, and it's amazing because we, in some ways, started things from scratch under new ownership, but have hit all-time business highs in so many ways, and have done it in a way that I really believe complements AEW too. So it's been a win-win and continue to build a great relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling. So that's great. Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful. Uh, we've heard that AEW and Ring of Honor are interested in extending Brian Cage's deal, and he got the win tonight. He's champion right now. Seems like a positive trend. Is there any update on that? Well, I really like Brian Cage. I think the Embassy are great champions, and Brian Cage has been a great wrestler in both AEW and Ring of Honor, and is a great champion now in Ring of Honor. So I really like Brian. I would definitely like Brian to stay for a long time. And uh, he did a great job tonight in the match, and he picked up a pin. And I think, uh, you know, the Embassy are definitely a big part of the show, and I would definitely like for them to stay, all three of them, including Brian. And, and uh, they're definitely dominant, great champions, and including Brian. Hi Tony, uh, Adam Wilborn, What Culture Wrestling. How do you uh, assess your first year uh, looking after Ring of Honor and what you've achieved, you know, Ring of Honor back on TV and what are some of the goals you want to achieve going forward for the rest of this year and, and beyond? Well, I'm very glad you asked. I'm very excited about where we stand one year in. It's pretty remarkable. Having done the first show, I was amazed at the pay-per-view interest and we did such a great show. And now one year later, it feels like a lot of things have come not full circle, but we've been come back around one year later and they'll keep going around and it's the start of almost a new circle. Because a year ago we started, we had that FTR Briscoe's match. Of course, nobody could have anticipated, nobody wanted to be where we are, but uh, looking at the situation and it's like Mark said, you have to accept it now, accept where we are and what the reality is and know that Jay's with us and know that it was great to have new champions crown, but also to have Mark and FTR, the other three fourths of that great trilogy, and you know to, to have them out there and look back at where we were at Supercard, I think that was pretty special. And also Samoa Joe arrived in Ring of Honor last year, and now he's a World TV Champion and has had a long reign and has won a lot of great matches as the TV Champion and picked up a huge win tonight. And it was an emotional win in a lot of ways, and in many of those emotions uh, were very challenging, but. Uh, to see Mark out there and to see the love he had from his family and from the fans and that outpouring of love continues. So I really, uh, as I've been around the company for a year, there are a lot of faces tonight on the show that have been involved with the company a lot throughout that year. Some of them I've known through AEW, some of them I only got to know one year ago. And it opened up a lot of new relationships in my life, changed my life very much. But what I'm really proud of regarding Ring of Honor is how many uh, people that work there that have been able to keep working in wrestling, which sometimes when you take over a new promotion, a lot of the people, especially if the promotion doesn't keep running, then a lot of the people won't be able to keep working. So we were able to keep the promotion running and a lot of people working and doing better, making more money than ever during working for Ring of Honor. And we brought a lot of new faces into the promotion and have done some special things. Um, and then brought in a great new champion like Shibata and to have international champions like Shibata coming in or the Lucha Brothers as the new tag team champions. So there's a lot of special things that have happened that we've grown and then from business standpoints, just to reiterate things I've already said, that we've hit new heights for Ring of Honor this year in terms of streaming, subscriptions, live event averages, and pay-per-view numbers. So really exciting and hopefully if we can continue that growth and this is gonna prove to continue and continue to be a great purchase I made and a great compliment to AEW and of course, both companies are returning to New York next week. And I have a huge announcement on AEW Dynamite. It's very important. And it's going to be an important week, not only because of all the great things happening in AEW, but all the stuff I've talked about, bringing all these great stars from Ring of Honor and having a huge world championship match like Athena versus Yamashita that I'm excited about. And so much more to come that we'll talk about. And, and I'll get to that big announcement for AEW and a lot of great matches across AEW and Ring of Honor next week. Um, so I'm excited about a lot of things, and for Ring of Honor, it's the growth and uh, all the things we've been able to build and continue to build on the business side, and more so than anything else, it's the human relationships and the people I've gotten to know and, and hopefully been able to introduce to the world. And if more people have gotten to know, specifically 
uh, Mark and Jay Briscoe as a result of Ring of Honor and the stuff we've done, and that makes me very happy. Thank you. Hey, hey. Uh, one thing we haven't talked about yet is Nigel McGinnis was on the show tonight. Uh, what's his status going forward? I don't think anything is announced. Is he signed? Is he going to be a ROH? Maybe a on-air authority figure again, like in the past. Uh, so, all the passing questions. Let's talk about well, these are all very good questions. Uh, they're all things that I look forward to discussing with him in the very near future. I wanted to get together and have an experience working together. I'm a huge fan of Nigel McGuinness. He's a huge fan, and I've uh, reiterated that to Nigel many, many times. I was a big fan of him as a wrestler and as a commentator. And I've never worked together or gotten to really spend time together in person before today. It was a great experience working with Nigel, and I hope to do it again and hope to continue doing that. And I think the world of him and uh, think the world of him as a wrestler and a commentator. And he has a great role in the history of Ring of Honor. And now we try to respect the history of Ring of Honor. I've really loved this renaissance of the promotion that we've been able to take so much of the great history and. and bring elements of that back and also start a new history for Ring of Honor and there's just something really fun about it. I think it's my dream. Uh, it, it's as far as like restarting a promotion and to take so many of the great elements and things that made it great and also be able to introduce so many of the things in the world of wrestling right now that are great that and, and knowing that there's only so many of those things that I can introduce for a variety of reasons in the three hours of TV we have for AEW now, I would say that for Ring of Honor, uh, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's gone really well, and I hope, uh, I hope we can continue it. I really do. So yeah, it's, it's, good, you know, it's good to think about. Thank you. Across the front here. Hi, Tony. Nick Hausman, House of Wrestling. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you. Uh, fantastic three-hour perfect show. Really tastes along very, very well. Uh, on top of ROH, on top of Dynamite, on top of Rampage, I've talked to a couple of people that say you're interested in maybe doing yet another show um, that could potentially give you the space to maybe move some people around, you know, maybe have different wrestlers on different rosters, maybe continue to create different rosters. Uh, when it comes to dealing with talent, especially talent maybe doesn't get along, do you find that having separate rosters and brands and being able to create rosters that work harmoniously together is an effective tool for you as a promoter? Yeah, I do think it's been great to have AEW and Ring of Honor and to be able to have two companies where there's crossover between the rosters, where there's people that identify with one show or the other, identify with certain championships or stories. It's great, but it's also been great uh, to have you know, that forbidden door kind of opening and people going back and forth and create new rivalries. So um, I'm always interested in developing new properties and uh, exciting possibilities and acquisitions and developments in the world of wrestling. And I definitely have had a really good experience here in Ring of Honor. I think expanding the Ring of Honor roster and again, bringing back some of those old rivalries from Ring of Honor, honoring some of those traditions and rivalries and creating new ones. So that's always something I'm interested in and would always be open to. Hello, Tony. A heavy wrestling joy. Congratulations on the killer paper tonight. All the ups and downs. The energy is great all night. One of the things that I wanted to talk to you about was um, you have shown a lot of incredible talent from all around the world tonight. Of course, there's Akio Commander. We had Tanahashi and Shibata. I wanted to get your thoughts on. What it was like watching Tanahashi and Shibata be out there, hearing the crowd. What were your emotions like? As well as um, your thoughts on Daniel Garcia and Wheeler Yuta and how they stepped up to the plate in these massive roles that were given to them during the show tonight. Thank you. Well, I'll start with Tanahashi and Shibata since you asked about them first. They're two of the greatest wrestlers I've seen, certainly of, of the generation and in my whole lifetime of watching New Japan Pro Wrestling and Wrestling for Japan, I think they're two of my personal favorites and two of the greats. And it was 10 years ago, I really got back into the New Japan heavyweight scene. I was started watching the juniors a little bit before that and really into their stuff. But probably 10 years ago, the heavyweights also started to draw me back in. Uh, and those are two of the great stars that I followed. And then 2013, 2014, uh, just such a great thing that was happening in New Japan. And uh, I started to see more of the wrestlers that were stars in New Japan 
coming over to America and getting signed places. And then, uh, honestly, when you have great stars like Shibata and Tanahashi, New Japan Pro Wrestling, to me, uh, they were able to they were able to sustain. And they lost big free agents, some of whom were international wrestlers. When I say international, I mean people from outside Japan. And some of these names, but also top stars from Japan. And they went over and signed uh, with WWE. And you saw some of the big names, but it was Shibata and Tanahashi, who were two steadfast names for New Japan. Tanahashi has continued on, and even though he's had major injuries, has worked through them and has been the ace in New Japan. Shibata is one of the greatest stories and one of the most inspirational figures, but it's been a very different path to get here tonight and walk out with the championship. And it's a very unlikely story, and it's a really special part of tonight. I think people expected emotionally uplifting moments and maybe some uh, tough, tough results, but I don't think people predicted which ones would be the emotionally uplifting matches and which ones would be the uplifting results. And I think that was part of the magic of tonight and where we're going forward because it leads to some unexpected paths. But for Shibata, uh, years ago, you know, if you'd said many years ago that he was going to be a top champion in the Ring of Honor in 2023, I think that people would have thought that's very possible. But then the road we took to get here, obviously, it's a very different Ring of Honor. It's a very different environment. It's a very different world of professional wrestling. And uh, again, I, it's pretty surreal that Shibata came through all that. And so to have great wrestlers who represent the very best in New Japan, like Tanahashi and Shibata, that is one of the great things that made Ring of Honor special in the past. And I think embodies also the new Ring of Honor. And uh, so that was great. And they both came out with great victories, which is emblematic of their status as two of the great legends in the sport of pro wrestling, Tanahashi and Shibata both are. And then you had two of our top young stars that have come in, Wheeler Yuta and Daniel Garcia. I think I mentioned some of this on my media call, but I first came to work with both of them a few years ago in Daly's Place. <laughs> and I'd actually seen them wrestle each other on the independents, and they both had a good reputation. We had built a really good crop of wrestlers on TV, and then we had the challenge of the pandemic, and we had to uh, start developing new stars in Daly's place outside of the TV to bring up the, the stars of the future. And we had a lot of great names that have become champions and stars in AEW that came from AEW Dark, including great wrestlers like the acclaimed and powerhouse Hobbs, and a lot of other great names, Red Velvet, and a lot of other people who worked through Dark and made it onto TV. And then after they moved up to TV, I was looking for the next crop of people. And Wheeler Yuta uh, was somebody, and I knew he had a great relationship with the best friends, and I thought he could come into AEW. And then the more I saw of him, the more I realized uh, he has that dark side, and maybe uh, he could learn more from the Blackpool Combat Club. And as he's seen, uh, he learned a lot from the best friends, and then he learned more different things from the Blackpool Combat Club on top of that. And it's uh, been a cool path he's taken to get here. Garcia. I originally thought it would be great with the team I had seen. They, they had been called 3.0. They were called Everrise on WWE television, but they had once been called 2.0, and I thought that would maybe be a little bit more appropriate for them because I didn't want Garcia to think, excuse me, I didn't want people to think that Garcia was part of a trio because it was Garcia and 2.0, not 3.0, and he's one of the three. And, but I thought they'd be great as a trio, and I was actually looking for a cool new team to wrestle on TV and to build up. But also, I was looking for somebody specifically that I thought would be cool to wrestle Eddie, Darby, and Moxley in a trios match on Dynamite. And that led to them. And, and I think that, that Menard and Parker, the 2.0 as they've been known and part of the Jericho Appreciation Society now, I think they've been great mentors for Garcia. And then later that Chris Jericho has been a great mentor for Garcia. I think he, like Yuta, could have, might have, in another universe, learned a lot from the Blackpool Combat Club. But I also think uh, the two of them have taken different paths, different roads, and maybe it's fitting that they're on parallel paths and, and they've crossed at times. They've both been the pure champion at times. They've had a great rivalry in Ring of Honor and a great rivalry in AEW, but certainly on the independents also, Yuta and Garcia. So I do, when I think of one at times, I do think of the other. Uh, they're both great young stars here. They're involved with different legends in the world of pro wrestling when you think of who uh, they're both mentored by with, with Jericho uh, compared to Moxley and Brian and Claudio. But I do think uh, they're both people who have a really bright future here, and it's a good juxtaposition to see two great wrestlers who have such a bright future with Garcia and Yuta 
being involved with Who Legends and Shabbat and Tanah Thanks. Thank you. A few more from people who haven't asked a question yet. <laughs> New questions? <laughs> I'll, I, I want to make sure people get them in, so I'll stick, stick with you. Hey, Tony. Graham Matthews with Bleach Report. Uh, just talking about, you mentioned, you know, Ring of Honor TV. We're five episodes in now. Obviously very well received so far, as you mentioned. Uh, so far, it's been approximately two hours per episode. Is that something that you plan to stick to, or are you still experimenting with? Well, it's, it's great having the freedom. I think we've been able to deliver that. And there's times where it might not be the right length, but that's the, the brilliance of having that creative freedom that I don't necessarily have when I have to deliver the exact same number of minutes and the same commercial breaks and the same length of bread and the same spot and having to, I get to move the breaks around and the lengths of the breaks on TV, but you have to do those commercial breaks. There's no way around it. And it also changes things. And also I'm fixed length. Sometimes I can get an over on, can't always get an over on. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people excited to watch AW All Access after Dynamite now too. So uh, we have great things come on after the show. So you have to be sensitive to that. Now for Ring of Honor, uh, it's a very different set of constraints. So. I like the freedom, and I think two hours is felt right for the shows, but there's other nights where it might not, it could be longer or shorter, and that, that's good too. And uh, that's one of the ways that Ring of Honor and the presentation is different from AEW, and I like that freedom. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, do you have a Phil and then Reg? Hi, Tony. Uh, Phil with the Bleacher Report. Um, we're coming up on the five year anniversary of All In in September. Um, do you have any plans to commemorate the event or, you know, break of ROH event to now arena? Well, I've thought a lot about that. It's a great question. And now I have a lot more opportunity to do that. And I, I have thought about that. Now that I own Ring of Honor, I own that video footage and that's a huge part of that library. And it was a great reason to make the acquisition. And so certainly something we can do and I, I would consider that and have considered that. So um, it's definitely a great question you asked, Phil. Thank you for asking about it. Uh, Righteous Reg, Grab City Podcast. Uh, one, is the event tonight going to be on the three month delay on Honor Club? Yep. 90 days. Yeah. 90 days, okay. Yes. And then, two, uh, with Ring of Honor and uh, I guess with AEW, you could say, We've seen a lot of, uh, I don't want to say free agents, but, but you've had you know some partnerships. We've seen Vikingo, we've seen Commander, we've seen these wrestlers. And people get obsessed with you want, wanting to sign everybody. Like As soon as they see a wrestler on TV, they're like, when's Tony going to sign them? When are we going to see the All Elite graphic? Do you Does that cross your mind? Do you get hung up on these signings? Or is, are you happy kind of sticking to having people just kind of filtering in and out from all over the place? Well, it depends. It's a case-by-case -case basis. There's a lot of times where it makes sense to sign somebody. Uh, there's a variety of reasons why you may do something on a nightly basis or often through a relationship with another promotion. We have a lot of promotional partners we've done things with, sent wrestlers overseas to other companies and brought wrestlers in from other companies in both AEW and here in Ring of Honor. So I think it's definitely an appropriate thing to look at the look the match, look the wrestler on a case-by-case -case basis. There's some people we do want to sign. There's other people who we bring in from a partner. And part of what makes it a partnership is I'm not trying to always steal my partner's wrestlers. Right. And I like, you know, having that. And they know that if somebody comes here, I'm not going to try and pressure them not to work their shows or to work mine instead of theirs because then people wouldn't want to partner with you if you're always uh, doing things behind their back. So it just depends on the situation. Um, and. It's a great question, though, and it, to your point, yeah, you do see that, but I think it's what's great. You know, when we started AEW and that, long before I imagined I would ever own Ring of Honor, uh, I, I had mentioned that one of the great things about the launch of AEW, and now I think the prominence of ROH and myself being involved and maybe, in some ways, deeper free agent budget and more of a budget for the Ring of Honor show and the product than there has been in the past. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. What I kind of, one of my theories on that has been proven true is that when AEW launched, we would create the strongest free agent market there's been in wrestling in a long time. And I think you've seen a lot of those things and the events that have transpired in recent years have proven that that theory works and it's true. And I believe that it's generated a lot of fan interest in wrestling in a good way, and you know, and really good that there's fans want to know what's going to happen, and 
people being excited about that free agent market, that's part of sports, and people want their teams to sign favorite players and the wrestling promotion you're a fan of. If you want to see more of somebody, you want them to get signed, but there's also other ways that people make frequent appearances too, and there's a lot of AEW wrestlers who go, do work certain shows overseas, and they're not signed. We just do that on the relationship between the companies. So, like I said, it's a, it's a case-by-case basis, but it's a great question. Thank you. Thanks. Well, yeah, we'll just complete the graphs in your line. So, Will Washington, <laughs> Fightful. Uh, so I wanted to ask you about the taping schedule uh, as far as Ring of Honor is concerned. You've done four shows at um, Universal Orlando and then this past week in St. Louis and you've obviously been promoting the fact that there's going to be uh, taping alongside Dynamite in, or on Long Island. And I, I think you were kind of implying that there might be one with uh, Kingston? Yeah, we are. That is, okay. Yes, definitely both. Yeah. Okay, so um, I guess to bring the question around, uh, do you see Ring of Honor uh, staying with the uh, AEW tapings, or do you feel like it's probably got more of a home inside of Universal Orlando, or do you see maybe eventually developing a touring schedule with Ring of Honor? I think it's a hybrid right now. It's like we found good success. What we just did leading to this paper, I thought worked well, that we were able to have great tapings at Orlando, and then do effectively a go-home show that also served the purpose to get some of the people that I wanted to feature on the pay-per-view who had international commitments here. So to get Shibata and Yuka Sakazaki and big names that might not have been available to be there in Orlando. And so it was another good reason not to tape all the shows. I think we got really, really positive feedback from the people that watched the first four shows that we did in Orlando, but also the people that went had a great time. It was a really successful live event experience. But then going into the pay-per-view, I thought it made a lot of sense to do a go-home show and have Yuka Sakazaki and Shibata involved and get them face-to-face involved in some of these big matches. And it created other opportunities to do a great match like Athena versus Sakura and have a big match on Thursday night to continue that tradition of big matches on WatchROH.com, on the TV weekly. And uh, so I think you could sometimes see it side-by-side with AEW and big arenas and also what we got in Orlando with those fans was very successful. People really liked the first four shows, so I think you'll see that again, too. So, probably a hybrid like what we've done so far, we'll continue to do. Thanks. Anyone not ask Tony a question? Bill, do you want to ask one more? You seem like you want to ask one more. (laughs) Yeah, sure. No, no, it's fine. You you had your hand up a long time. Uh, I talked to Maria Canellis Bennett not too long ago. She said she had to talk to you about potentially adding the Women's Wrestling Army to Honor Club. She feels like there's great synergy there. Any comment on that? And just having Honor Club act as a home for not only that, but just kind of building off of this question, more exclusive content that you can only find there. It's a great question. And again, it's something I've said to Maria, just like you know I mentioned before, that we've been really trying to scale up and for the crew it's been hard and today was you know just coming off dynamite AEW's crew is putting together a great rampage for tonight and there's great matches and we had uh really a lot to do between putting thursday's countdown special and a new show on honor club and then coming here so to have three shows in two days is a big deal so and that's effectively what we had between uh, episode five of ring of honor tv and Rampage and Honor Club. So the crew did an amazing job and and battled through a lot to make it happen. And I think as we continue to scale up and do more, I'm really excited about the evolution of the TV of Ring of Honor and these new pay-per-views. And I'd love to add more things to Honor Club. One thing I've enjoyed about the Ring of Honor Weekly TV is being able to do more matches without the constraints of commercial breaks and bring in some younger, less recognized on a worldwide basis wrestlers that are very popular with the hardcore fans, but might not necessarily translate yet to great Nielsen ratings. And also some international stars, similarly, that I think a hardcore fan base is really excited to see. And this includes a lot of women's wrestlers that we brought in, and matches that I've been able to do with no commercial breaks or time constraints, and Athena has been wrestling this crazy schedule. And to bring in a lot of stars, you know, not only to wrestle Sakura, who's with us on a pretty regular basis, but is a legendary name and a match Athena really wanted to get in and have, but also then to be able to wrestle Yuka Sakazaki, that's a big deal, but now we have Yamashita coming in. So a lot of big women's matches, but not just the championship matches, I think up and down the card each week, 
we've seen wrestlers come in. Miranda Alize had a great match with Willow tonight. But Miranda Alize also had a, a really good match with Billy Starks. And, uh, and then we had uh, tremendous uh, performances from Sky Blue and other names that have gotten involved here uh, in AEW. Willow Nightingale had a classic match with Athena. And that was the main event of our second episode of TV. And that's one of the best matches we've had in Ring of Honor since I took over. So I look forward to doing more great women's wrestling matches, whether they're on the Ring of Honor Weekly Show or uh, Maria's Project, the Women Wrestling Army. It's a great idea. It's another brand. We already have AEW and Ring of Honor. So to add another three-letter brand, on it is, I don't know if it necessarily is the perfect fit, to be honest with you, but it's a good idea. She has talked to me about it. And I do think adding a lot more women's matches and uh, – having international stars and top young stars that we're trying to develop for both AEW and Ring of Honor for the future. It's a really good mix we have going on right now to be able to bring in names like to have Sakazaki challenging Athena tonight, but have Yamashita in, I think that's tremendous. But a lot of the great young wrestlers we've been featuring too, Sky Blue and Willow have had a lot of TV time, but I think they continue to get better and the more TV and pay-per-view matches I can give Sky Blue and Willow, that's really great for both companies, I think, because they have a lot of potential anywhere they wrestle those two. And uh, we've seen a lot of other names that have history in Ring of Honor that we've been able to bring back in to the fold. Young wrestlers we're trying to rise up and people we bring in from all over the world. I'd like to really have all that on the weekly TV show we're doing because like we said, often, so far, it's been about two hours in length, and there's a lot of time for great matches in that show. And also, I'm already producing several shows, so um, what I do add, I would probably keep within the context of Ring of Honor on those shows, if that makes sense. Um, so I, w I would like to thank everybody for coming. This really means a lot. It's a really great group of people here in the room. It's a prestigious group of wrestling writers, and it's also a lot of really big wrestling fans, and I really appreciate you giving me your time and also the respect you showed a lot of the people here today. They're people I really respect, so the respect you showed, uh, you know, from the top, from, from when we walked in here to Porsche Shibata, I, know I mentioned it, the respect you showed him, I think he deserves it, and I appreciate that, and it was uh, tremendous to be able to sit here with him, with Athena again. Uh, I thought your questions and everything uh, about that was befitting of her championship status, Mark Briscoe, that meant a lot to be able to sit here with him, and I thank you for uh, the time and dignity you treated that all with, and also uh, to Claudio. And uh, so I, I'm thanking everybody that made the trip, but also uh, very excited what's to come next week. I just want to reiterate, I have a very important announcement on that. <laughs> a big one. And, uh, How important, I'm Tony? Very important. Very, 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 very. Multiple varies. Although I only put one on the graphic, but I could have easily had a, another berry in a column. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be really important going to New York next week. Uh, AEW's taking a lot of really positive steps, but ROH also has taken a lot of positive steps. And tonight, I thought, had one of the best events I've been a part of. And in so many ways, I think there were great surprises. There were hard realities that we all had to face in the ring and out of the ring. And I think tonight spoke to that, that that's what life is. A lot of times it's hard realities and you have to get up and move on. And uh, we found that in real life and we saw it tonight in our wrestling. I just really appreciate all being here and thank you for coming tonight. Thank you.